If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. That's Romans 12:18. I bring that up just because the world is trying to divide us. It's something I talk about daily, and we need to be extra aggressive in not being one of those contributing factors into that division. That's how we show Christ-likeness. He forgave those who spat on him, who mocked him. And it's extremely difficult to do, something I'm not always capable of doing, but it's something I strive to do. And when you look around the world and all the different division that is being preached, Kamala Harris now is making stops. They're flying in, you know, Zelensky from Ukraine, stopping in Pennsylvania, they're stopping in Georgia to, you know, virtue signal about abortion rights, about things that at the very least should have a very serious conversation and not be so blanketed with it's a woman's right when it's something that very clearly in the Bible is not a woman's right it's the right of the unborn to have life because it's all under God and when we stray from his laws as having sex outside of marriage and all these unwanted pregnancies that's a snowball effect of how far we've fallen but you look in the world and all the things that are promoted, there's a, there's a poll that went out or a study that came out that says for the first time in the history of the church, at least in this country, there's more men, there's more young men actively involved in the church than women. It's always been more women that have gone to church. And it kind of makes sense. You know, when you're the homemaker and you're raising the children, you probably have more time to have that relationship with God, to want to be in study. But as the world has attempted to take women out of the home and put them into the workforce, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but that should not be the applied norm. It should not be demonized, as it has been with Harrison Butker, when he suggested that some women appreciate playing their God-given role of nurturer, of raising the family. It's, it's two coming together as one, both playing pivotal roles, no one more important than the other, but there is a level of submission, and they are both submitted under God unto Christ. Now, it's, it shouldn't be any surprise that Harrison Butker, he has the number one selling jersey in the NFL right now. At least that's what I just read. People are flocking to buy his jersey to show support. Now, again, he represents the Roman Catholic Church, which has a lot of issues on its own, but people don't understand how jumbled all of the religious right has intentionally become. So m most people just look at him as a religious zealot or hypocrite or, you know, whatever, as a Christian. There are differences. But the fact that he, because he spoke out in many ways courageously, assuming his heart is in the right place, even though people will use his religiosity of some of his stances to increase divide but that courage is being applauded and supported and yet there's less women in the church than there ever has been and he's popular for talking about pretty much that group of women that would be in the church that applaud traditional marriage traditional homes with a husband and a wife, the husband working hard to provide for the wife and kids, and the wife raises the children. It's, it's crazy that we're living in a world where that's such a bad thing to say. You know, if, the, if, women, if, all, if all men were raised up properly to be godly men, to respect women the way they should, to want to treat women with respect... I think women wouldn't have a problem with that. But the problem is there's been so many elevated men who don't respect women, who do treat women poorly, who treat others poorly just to begin with. That's how a lot of them got to where they are. But again, it's a succession of events. It's a snowball effect. When sin is introduced, it, it takes out legs, pegs from the ladder. And we're all victims in some way, but we have victory in Christ. And that's why knowing what he did on the cross, 
and that he rose again is so important. It obliterates all the lies, all the false narratives of the world. So, again, Romans 12, 18, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Because the world is trying to use everything to divide us, the males against the females, race against race, sex against sex, preference against preference. Romans 16, 17, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. That includes in church, but it also means being discerning of all the messages of the world that pull us away from true doctrine. Just because they use the name Jesus or God here or there doesn't mean they're preaching true doctrine. So, again, take that for what it's worth. You have some courage. You speak for truth. People will support you. So you step into that, step into that faith. And even if it brings you suffering, it's all for the glory of God because God suffered like no man ever has. I pray this finds you well. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.